Game of Thrones, a podcastable frontier. I tried to picture clusters of storylines as they moved from Westeros to Essos. Where were they going? Dragons, White Walkers, were the characters like cannon fodder? I kept dreaming of a podcast I thought I'd never see. And then, one day, I got in. They're waiting for you. Clap your hands. Overwatch. Lannister, Targaryen, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. Welcome back, my lords and ladies, to the Cast Beyond the Wall. We are your guide to all things Westerosi, and we're here to bring you a review, analysis, and a bro v. bro debate of each episode of HBO's hit show, Game of Thrones Season 6. I'm your host, Caleb Masters, and uh, I, when, if I have one thing I want to tell the audience today, that is uh, hashtag Embalish I Distrust. Now, for those of you who haven't listened, uh, this is my uh, Game of Game of Thrones kind of recap show, and I am joined by two lovely other voices from around the internet. Uh, for those of you who have tuned in before, you'll they will be familiar to you. For those of you who are on the new, I very excited to introduce you to my other host, beaming to us from from the from the southwestern desert region. Sir, can you introduce yourself? I am Austin Lucari, and I hate the show. Why are you watching this show? <laughs> Why, Austin Lucari, you're the man who doesn't finish anything. Why are you still watching this on season six? Why are you on a podcast for the third se- year in a row? I don't understand. It's a very good question you bring up. Um, I watch it because I have this podcast to record. You guys might have heard it. It's called Cast Beyond the Wall. <laughs> oh, my um, God. What that's lo- pretty much the only reason at this point that I continue to watch this show. Listen, Austin, I know what it is. I, I know what it is. It's because you really want to see how far Sam Walter Harley makes it. You sadistically hate watch him week to week. I hear it. I know it. I watch it. No. I keep hoping every week he's going to choke on some, like, sausage or something. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right. You know what? You know, enough of this, this guy. This guy's a Debbie Downer. We don't want to talk to him anymore. Joining us from the Midwest, the heart of the Midwest, there might be hills, there might be blue, and there might be some really overrated basketball team. Sir, can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Daniel Stoll, and I'm voting Tyrion Various 2016. Dude, I want to vote for those guys. You got my vote right there. You know there. what? I'm going to have to agree with you. I, I would do the same. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that you've heard our voice and had our introductions and you know who we are, we are the host of the Cast Beyond the Wall, and this year we are podcasting with new hosts. So those of you who've been listening to us for a couple, three years now uh, might know that we went from independent to working for the corporate man known as WeGotThisCovered.com, which is, by the way, still a wonderful entertainment website I hope you check out. And now we are going into the realm of podcasting websites with the good trash media network that's right the good trash media network uh which is a film and podcast website dedicated to taking your experience of watching tv and film beyond the screen and onto your device why because we here at good trash media believe that tv and film is so much more than 90 minutes a bucket of popcorn or in this case 60 minutes and a bottle of beer that's how we roll here on uh the game of thrones podcast well, you know, bottle of beer, bottle of beer, a little bit of popcorn to go on the side, you know, whatever rolls. Here we are. We are with the, the Good Trash Media Network. And it, for those of you who've been tuning in, I am also a co-host, regular co-host on on the Good Trash Media Network, where I review movies for Back to the Movies, as well as a one of the hosts for the Good Trash Genre Cast, which is kind of a film analysis podcast. If you guys like movies, I think that we, I, it, Good Trash Media is just the place. I'm very proud to to bring. The cast beyond the wall, a little closer to home, a little more, a little more intimately connected to my to uh, my podcasting habits, uh, and we all can share under the same roof. It's very exciting. But enough of this. You're like you, you don't really care about who's hosting what or what. You don't care about any of this nonsense. What you care about is Game of Thrones Season 6. And ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about Game of Thrones Season 6. We are super excited to talk about Game of Thrones Season 6. Holy shit cakes, guys. It's been like a year since we've had Game of Thrones. I am feeling every second of it. I don't know about you guys. 
I agree. Shit cakes abound. <laughs> Austin, were you making shit cakes the whole whole time? I was. I was, and I'm gonna throw them all at Sam Tarley. Oh my god, you you bastard, you. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, obviously, the new season, season six, has not started yet, but we want to catch some of our first-time listeners uh, and returning listeners. We want to catch you back up to speed because not everyone had time to go back and rewatch every episode of the show or even every episode of season five. So we really want to give you a little refresher on what's been going, what was going on in Westeros when you last left it almost a year ago. And it's Game of Thrones, so there's actually quite a bit of ground to, to, to cover here. Now, I want to remind listeners out there, we need to show a show of hands of our, of our, uh, among our hosts. Who here has read the books? I have. I know I have right here. Anyone else on the podcast read the books? I have read all of the books up to date. Austin? I have read none of the books, and I am cooler for it. So. Oh, lamer. <laughs> lamer. Well, here's the thing, Austin. You're in luck, because for the first time ever, we're finally on the same playing field. Me and you were equals, because... With the exception of a couple of storylines, pretty much we're caught up. So I'm in the dark on some stuff. I have no idea what's going on. So this is going to be fun. We're all in this together. We're back in the predicting game. There's not, there's not this whole like you guys discuss things and I sit back and 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 kind of stroke my beard and be like, all right, these fools have no idea what they're about to get into. There's none of that this season. Uh, so let's go ahead, guys, and head into kind of our season five kind of recap or in preview discussion. Nothing's more hateful than failing to protect the one you love. There's no justice in this world. Not unless we make it. Avenge them. I believe men of talent have a part to play in the war to come. I will never sit on the Iron Throne. You will be queen. You could help another climb those steps and take that seat. We can be heroes. Just I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. All right. So that was from Game of Thrones Season 5, guys. That was a year ago. That concluded back in June of 2015. And here we are in... April of 2016, about to tackle season six. But we're going to go ahead and kind of, we're going to go around the world, so to speak, and talk a little more about the different storylines that we left on. And you know, the one that I am very excited to talk about, and I think Austin might just be a little bit excited to talk about this one. Mm-hmm. Not, not just one year ago, but two years ago, we left Bran, my man Bran, stranded in a tree. Crawling on the floor. Yeah, it's just, just crawling around, crawling around like well, some sort of creature. Hodor was there. Uh, if you remember, Jojen Reed got blown away really anticlimactically, and uh, some dude in a tree is like, "Hey, bro, I can make you fly." I would take that offer. So we <laughs> have strictly all guessing. So I want to know what do you guys think uh, Bran has been up to, and then where do you think he's going this season? I mean, you don't just go away for a season and come back like nothing happened. Austin Akari, got to start with you, the Bran fan, the Hodor fan, Hodor Megazord superhero. What, what's, uh, what's the deal with Bran? You, you <laughs> just stole my joke. I was about to say that he's been training to learn how to create the Hodor Wolf Bran Megazord. And you just took it. You took it right out from under me. I'm a little sad. Eh, you know, I um, do what I can. <laughs> I, I think, honestly, uh, they're going to pick up pretty much right where they left off with it. Um, I don't. I think they're going to act like no time has passed. We'll see. I, I think. I think the he's been learning a little bit um, how to handle his warg abilities and how to you know control his wolf more um, more tightly. Um, how to handle the crows a little bit more tightly. And eventually, I think the end game here is he's going to warg into a dragon to win everything. Because Bran will sit on the throne when this is all over. Well, he's going to warg into a dragon. There's no question there. I don't know about when the throne, because I, I am of the mind that the Iron Throne is not going to exist by the time this show is done. But uh, I like what you're thinking. So you really think that last season, all the stuff that happened, Bran was just twiddling his thumbs inside the tree? He was just sitting, he, he was just sitting there kind of uh, 
being like, man, I wish I could get my legs back. The whole time while, you know, Cersei was falling from power and the White Walkers took the wall and Jon Snow got killed. You think he was just twiddling his thumbs the whole time? I think they will not show much progress in the time where season four ended and season six picks up. I don't think they're going to show a lot as far as like progression in Bran. He might have honed his abilities a little bit, but I don't think we're going to see any drastic changes from where we left off. No. Interesting. Mr. Stoll, where do you think, where, where is Bran going this season? <clears throat> well, I think I agree with Austin a little bit uh, about that. I think it's going to start off right where they left off. We're going to not see, uh, they're not going to, there's not going to be like he did all this stuff and we missed all of it. They're going to kind of just start right where it was at, but I'm definitely expecting, a lot of uh, visions going to be happening this season. I think there's going to be a lot of warging happening this season. He's going to be honing those skills if he hasn't already started to do that. Um, and I happen to believe that Brand may be the most important person in Westeros right now. Um, we did miss out on him for a season, but I still think that he, the where his story is headed, could lead him to be one of the most important people because of his connection that it seems to be uh, with this warging ability, uh, as we talked about with the dragons. Um, and even maybe there is a connection to White Walkers there. Um, he may be the one person that can control, stop, lead, whatever word you want to use there, stop them, control them, maybe even lead them. I think that's kind of a scary thought because um, then you're getting Bran on one side and Daenerys on another side or however you want to look at that. Or he may even join the White Walkers in some way, which I think uh, could be really uh, scary as well. But I, I do believe that this season uh, especially will be a really major sto- major part of the story this time. And he'll have a really huge him- impact on what's happening. Or at least it'll be the setup for what could be a really major impact on the overall story. I'm going to add a layer to this, guys. Um, firstly, Stoll, the idea of him teaming with the White Walkers is kind of weird. I'm not sure I'm into that. And if it would go that direction, I'd be a little surprised. However, maybe, maybe he wargs into a White Walker who rides a dragon. <laughs> what 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 your argument is invalid no longer <laughs> <laughs> you can't argue with that <laughs> no i think i think um bran is definitely going to be there in what i'm calling the end game basically he's going to be one of the last players i think him john snow which we will get into later and denarius will be kind of the last people involved um, in Game of Thrones, and I'm excited to see it happen. Uh, the, uh, Austin, I don't know what you're talking about. Jon Snow is most definitely dead. Come on now. Yeah, I mean, I mean have they you only told us that's right. That it slipped times. my mind that he had been stabbed to death. You know, <laughs> if, if as if the, the ending of the last season wasn't tease enough. I mean, the trailers, which Austin is an unsullied, he does not watch. He's unsullied. He's clean. He does not watch the trailers. Uh, the trailers have gone out of their way repeatedly to be like, Jon Snow is definitely dead. I'm like, all right, guys, you're trying too hard. That's cute. Uh, so, Austin, yeah, I think those are three of the most important characters. I think I think you're also going to see Tyrion and Sansa up there as well as two of the more important long-running characters in the show. So I think we'll see a lot of them. So here's my theory on Bran this season. I think Bran is going to channel his Jedi magic. And we're going to start to see some visions of the past. I have a suspicion that we're, especially given Jon Snow, we're going to learn more about the past this season. Like about his heritage. Because if he does come back, that does confirm uh, a pretty major theory out there in one way or another uh, with his heritage. And Game of Thrones, I last season, he kind of pl- toyed with the idea of doing a flashback. When with Cersei, and it was only one, but I think they were kind of testing the waters to see how it goes. And I don't think we get more flashbacks per se, but what I do think is we have some dream sequences where Bran witnesses events from the past. I think we see him, he witnesses, maybe he learns, maybe he's the one who finds out who Jon Snow's mom is. Uh, maybe that's how we get to see that story, because again, Game of Thrones traditionally not a show that features flashbacks, but I do feel like it's also a show with, with certain things like that, it's going to be very hard to get around. Um, and we've seen and we've seen uh, Bran when he touched the weirwood tree last season. He had visions of the past as well. Uh, Ned Stark under the under the big weirwood tree. So I really think that's where we can expect to see Bran go this season. I don't know fully to the extent of his actual plot progress, but I think we're going to learn a lot about his powers. I, I think we're going to be in a Batman Begins style training montage for the whole season, except for 
it's going to be interesting. Unlike Arya's Batman Begins style montage from last season, which was a drag, I think this is going to be significantly more interesting because he's got that supernatural element to him that I don't think uh, the intrigue there that I don't think Arya's really got going on. I think Game of Thrones, the show, is uh, does a really good job of setting up two different sides. And you kind of wanting to pull for both sides. If you think back to Blackwater, um, you had Tyrion on one side, and you were really pull, pulling for him to win that battle. But you really hated the Lannisters also, and maybe part of you wanted Stannis to win. And so you kind of have these um, feelings on both sides, and you, don't, and you don't really know what you want. I think Bran may end up being that character. Um, I think he may be, end up being someone who's um, more on – this other that we've heard about in, in reference to the person not the uh, the god of uh, light uh, not not to um, be mis- not the op the the rival of Rollo or the lord of light aka for those of you not in the know that is the god that Melisandre the red witch serves and prays to right and i think bran may end up on the other side of that um which i think depending on how you read the show uh, daenerys is a uh, fire side where and melisandre has got this fire light side and then bran may end up on the other side of that where there's this ice um side that's going to be the opposite of fire song of ice and fire so i think bran may end up on that side and so i think there could be some uh you're not going to know which side you really want to win overall because you've got positive feelings on both sides We'll see. Uh, they're gonna. I mean, after uh, watching Hard Home last year, where the White Walkers kind of come in, came in and totally destroyed that entire village and resurrected the dead, they're gonna have a long way for us to want to pull for those guys. So, I mean, Game of Thrones can do it. They've done it before, but that's they kind of so far represent like the impending apocalypse. So, getting us to root for them, I think, is gonna be a real challenge. Not undoable by Game of Thrones. I think George R. R. Martin and then the creators, uh, D. B. Wise and B- uh, Benioff and Wise are really, really good at doing that. They're really good at introducing characters that you really dislike and then finding ways to bring them around. But they, they grow on you. Uh, we all, None of us don't right. think are particularly huge fans of Cersei, but there's a lot of certain respect there that you have. So maybe they do the same thing with the White I, Walkers. For the record, I have been a fan of Cersei since season one, and I will always be a fan of Cersei. I'm a fan of Cersei as a character. I don't like her as a person, okay? I, she's well, a great. She's, a, she's an amazing character. I love Cersei. All around. I think this season... I could make an argument that I'm on her side. Aha! Well, well you know, well, maybe we, we might have more to talk about Cersei. The tables are bit. turning Kate, on you, Caleb. You will not be <laughs> Tables to. are turning. I never said I was anti Cersei. I said I didn't like her as a person. Anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about Cersei here in a little bit, but first, we need to hit on some other stuff going on up in the north. Uh, the north! Uh, like, firstly, how about Sansa and Reek? They last seen jumping from the walls of Winterfell into a pile of snow. Uh, some people online apparently thought they were dead. I say, nay, you people are crazy. I think they're definitely alive. But my question is, and again, this is totally new territory for me, where are they going? I, I don't know. Uh, and I think we talked a little bit about this last season, but I really don't like the way that, that uh, her storyline ended. And if they are dead, which I'm with you, I'm pretty sure they're not. But if they are dead, they are dead. That's, atro- that's atrocious writing. They're um, not dead. But no, so, they're not. They're I'm not pretty sure. Dead. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're they're alive. So if you, for those that believe they're dead, I I don't buy that at all. But um, yeah, they're pretty. They're alive. Um, I think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna stick together. The only f- option I feel like she has right now is to find Littlefinger again, and I don't know if that's safe. But I think that might be her only option. I mean, he is right marching now. north, so she doesn't so, know that though. I, right, but I think that. Things have a way of playing out in Game of Thrones, uh, and so I think that she just might end up with him again. Uh, but I, again, I don't really know for sure. And uh, Theon, I think, will definitely be separated. I think he's going to try to get as far away from the North as possible because he knows that if he goes back that he is not in a good position with his former master. So, um, yeah, let, I think he's going to try to get as far away listener. as possible. Let, let's remind the listener. He threw Bolton's... Uh, one of his lovers, uh, one of his ladies, from the tower, and she died. Austin, here. What uh, What are we thinking about uh, Theon and Sansa? You have any high hope? You have high hopes for them at all? I'm I'm wondering about a Stark reunion. Actually, I'm wondering if they decide to head north to the Wall because that's what everyone seems to do when they're in trouble, and they end up meeting up with Bran. I think that'd be a really cool reunion. I think the ultimately the writers will deny us that, but I think it'd be really fun to see. Well, but 
maybe she doesn't end up with Bran. I think it's a little far fetched. But let's just say Jon Snow's not dead. For some there reason. Is that. For there some is reason, that. He's not dead. But he's totally dead. They keep telling us he's dead. So we They've told us a hundred times that, you know. So we know it's not true. <laughs> we know it's not true. He's definitely he's not dead. Okay, okay, guys. We're gonna talk about Jon Snow later. Damn it. Stay on track. Stay on track. All right. Okay, okay. So I don't know. I'm I'm pretty indifferent to the storyline. I for some reason I want to say Reek's gonna try to go head back to his people. Maybe I, I don't know because where else does he have to go? Really, he's an abused partner who's trying to go away from his abuse abusive spouse or lover. So the only place he has to go would be his family. Who yes, they kind of hate him and left him for dead, sort of. But he, what else choice does he have? And I also have a hunch. That yo ho yo ho, the Greyjoys are gonna have a role to play this season. So I feel yo like it would... ho ho ho, pirates life for me. Austin's been singing that song for like four years now. And I really have. I actually was singing earlier today in preparation of the podcast. Oh my god, you and the Greyjoys. Um, I, I think that he's gonna end up going back there. With Sansa, though, I honest to God don't know. Maybe she tries to go and find Brienne. Maybe. Does she know? I don't know if she even realizes Brand isn't within close proximity of her. That, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Brand is was right there, so exactly. that could definitely be an option. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Which leads me to my next question: Did Brian really kill Stannis? Now we had an extensive discussion about this uh, at the conclusion of our last season's podcast, but I just the director David Nutter swears up and down, up and down that. Stannis is definitely dead. But you can't. Uh, you just can't do that to a, a character of his magnitude off camera. Well, that's the thing. Why would you kill a character who had been following for like four seasons off camera? It just it just seems weird. And but the it thing does. about the thing about him though is if he's still alive, this changes everything. Uh, at least in the, at least in the north. So you've got maybe Brienne takes him as a, as a bargaining ship to Winterfell to see if she can get Sansa back. But whoops, Sansa's not there. And then what? And then the Boltons have both Brienne and Stannis. So I, I, I really don't know. Like I really feel like this could go either way. And I'm, I'm really curious about it. I really hope Stannis isn't dead. He's not my favorite character, but man, he deserves better than that. He's just, he's just too important. And I have a certain, despite he, the fact that he burned his daughter alive at the stake last season, there is a hint of admiration in his drive and loyal sworn loyalty to his duty even if it is even if it is um even if it is very self uh, indulgent duty i i do have a certain admir- respect is probably the better word you know i i mean i think he has noble intentions but when you burn your daughter you kind of lose a lot of credibility um i think stannis I'm not sure what to do with Stannis, honestly. Like, I would not put it past the show's directors to have him actually be dead with the kind of, like, off-screen death. Because they've done it a lot lately. Like, we don't really know if the Hound is dead. We don't know if Sansa's dead. Stannis is in question. Jon Snow. Like, it's just constant with these, like, off-screen kind of deaths and questions. So it ends up being like kind of almost artificial buildup for deaths and kind of cliffhangers and stuff at the end of the season. And I don't even really know what to do with them anymore, honestly, because it, it, it's just kind of all over the place. Um, but as far as uh, Stannis goes, I'm going to go I'm going to go with dead I'm gonna go with dead. You can write me down as Austin considers him dead. Austin. To back up, hey Austin, you want to bet a uh, pop uh, figurehead on that? Mm. Yes. Oh snap! I want to bet a pop figurehead. First bet Don't of the it. season, ladies and gentlemen. I've had a lot of I've had a lot of vodka tonight, but we're gonna go with a pop figurehead. All right, Austin, what pop figurehead are you choosing? I need to know. Oh, myself. Um, we got to go with a Greyjoy, right? So maybe Theon. Do we which Theon do we want? Do we want Rick Theon? Do we want season two Theon? Do we want we one season? We want season do we two. Want, do we want Ramsey's bit? We, we, you, you don't want Rick you don't want pressing. We, you, you mean we you still don't, want him to be a whole person? You, you yeah. don't want you don't want Ramsey's bitch Theon? Uh, the, the pop, pop figurehead? No, no, I don't want that. I want I want the Greyjoys in their full glory. That's what I want. All right, all right. So we're digital shaking hands right now. Shaking hands. Wait, wait, Caleb, what what's yours? What's Caleb's choice? That Stannis is not dead. 
No, no. Oh, I mean, what's your, what you what's your get? Pop what's your pop? Oh like? man. Yeah. Oh, geez. Well, you got me a little Austin. You were so generous to give me a little finger last year after I bet Did on I, there. I was trying to remember which one I sent you. You, you sent me a little finger. So God, um, you know what? Oh God, there's so many good choices. Ooh, you know what? Just just go ahead and uh, send me an Oberon Martell. We'll go Oberon Martell. Oh, you know good what? Choice. I totally approve of that choice. And I might send you one anyway, just because how awesome he is. I mean, <laughs> Ober Martel is kind of amazing. And his pre- there's been a day that passes in my life that I don't regret the fact that he didn't kill the mountain. Oh, my God. Right. So there you have it, folks. We'll, we'll really regret it this season. Oh, God. Don't even remind me. Um, so <laughs> uh, that's it. That, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. First on-air bet of the year. Tune in for future episodes to find out who wins the bet. Now, I have a feeling we're going to find out really damn soon, like within the first Probably. Episodes. Probably the first two episodes, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't so, think it's so, going to take long. Now we've got the gray joys uh, and kind of the talking points here. I, I want you to know, Austin, I think you're very excited. Gray joys, they're coming back this season. I don't want to spoil anything, but they're coming back in a big way. Like the Austin, we, the Austin Lucar way. How do we know that they're coming back? Because my heart has been damaged before. I don't think I could take it again. Well, see, some of us aren't unsullied, Austin, and we read casting announcements and watch trailers. <laughs> and um, and but there was a legitimate question of if they if they don't bring these characters in now, like when are they going to bring them in? Because they have a huge arc in the fourth book, A Feast for Crows, that so far the show did not adapt that particular storyline. And we're all like, hmm, well, I guess they're not going to do that. That would seem kind of weird because it seems like a really big deal in the context of what's going on. But you're like, okay, well, maybe they're just going to cut that whole thing entirely. But then they're like, oh, hey, we're going to cast a shitload more Greyjoys. And uh, in the trailer, Austin, mm, it's not a spoiler, but man, you would have shit your pants if you'd watched this trailer. Okay, there, there's a moment, there might be a shot used in a couple of trailers of a boat on the ocean, a, an epic boat in a storm on the ocean. So that's all I'm going to say. Ho, 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 pirates <laughs> like for me. They're going full Jack Sparrow in there. Okay, that's all. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't, I won't spoil about the storyline, but I just want you to know that I, I'm pretty sure we can say they're going to be back this season in a way that you're going to be very excited to see. And I think you're going to be very surprised to see at that. So. It might make up for all the lameitude that might end up happening this season with Sam Tarly. Well, there is the Sam Tarly. And actually, Austin, I'm glad you brought that up because I almost forgot good old Samuel Tarly up in the north. You know what, Austin? You know what this season's going to be going to be paraphrased as? It's going to be Game of Thrones season six, colon, Sam and Gilly's big day. No! And, yeah, because no. we're going to get a road trip <laughs> no. movie of them traveling across Westeros. Just oh, the two of them. It. No. For new listeners tuning in, uh, remind them uh, you you are the biggest. You are in fact wearing a Samuel Tarly shirt now, right now, because you are his biggest fan. Yeah, yeah. It's a picture of a steak. That's all it is. It's Samuel <laughs> Tarly. You monster. Because I hope he gets roasted like uh, like Sa- like uh, Stannis's daughter. That's what I hope, and I get to eat. Wow! Wow! You want to eat the piggy? Yeah, delicious. Oh my delicious. god, you're a freaking monster, Austin. A monster. Sam's a nice guy. That's too funny. He knows yeah, how to Sam's read. Sam's great. Sam's he's, great. He's not a nice person. You're kidding yourself right now. Hey, hey, uh, Austin, you need to remind you, Sam the Slayer has killed more White Walkers than pretty much every other character other than Jon no, Snow. No, no, not more than Jon Snow, <laughs> I, for the oh, record. Oh, but Jon Snow's dead, so he's killed more than any other living character <laughs> in Game of Thrones. Jon Snow is not dead, and you know it. Don't you kid yourself right now. What I'm, actually, I, I'm actually kind of with Austin on this one. Uh, I I don't want Sam dead. I like Sam a lot, but I do think that this storyline might be a little bit boring, uh, unless something crazy happens. I do think this might be a just a a boring storyline this season. Well, we'll see. We'll 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 see because here's the thing. Um, what happens in the book is actually extremely boring because all it is, Austin, you would love this. You would love this. All right. Spoilers for A Feast of Crows, the Sam and Gilly storyline specifically. I will not spoil anything else, but I just have to throw this out there because I know the season, this season is not going this direction. You know what the whole book for is, Austin? They get on a boat and they have sex and feel guilty about it for the whole book. Whole book. The whole book <laughs> until the, la- like the last chapter and you're like, holy shit. No, Sam is not m- the last chapter, and then- the last paragraph. The last, last paragraph <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, Samwell is actually hugely critical to what's going on right now. And then the boat hits an iceberg and then they have to make a choice between this who is not will Titanic. fit <laughs> on the piece of wood. Gilly? And guess who they pick? Well, both of them. They and then Gilly Sam. lives and then... <laughs> Freaking Sam just floats off Whoa, and, 
and becomes part of the iceberg. Whoa, 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 uh, whoa, Austin, Austin, you got this backwards. We know if anyone's going to sacrifice themselves, it's definitely going to be Gilly. Okay, Sam's going to be the, he's going to be the one who's going to be like ninety years old and he's going to be dropping his little Gilly emblem into the ocean, singing uh, "My Heart Will Go On" at the end of season six. We know how it's going. Near, far, wherever oh, you are. Gosh. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that's Sam and Gilly. But I, I'm, I'm I, you know, okay. Listeners, I'll be straight with you. We like to play around. I'm really not that excited about this storyline. But you know what? I'm going to defend it because his storylines, while not always the most interesting, do always give us a lot of vital history and interesting facts. Because that's what Sam is and good a for. Sense of, and a sense of hope. Sam is the one character that continues to live, and you, ha- you just hope. That he yeah, dies every Sam. single day. No, no. I hope that he gets he comes around. He's gonna be loved by people one day. No. He's gonna have the Iron Throne at the end, Austin. You know it. I know he, it. He's the one hope that this world could be good. This world could be a good world, and Sam, Sam is that figure. Sam? You think Sam <laughs> is, the, Slayer, is the like is the vision of a good world. You think Sam is that? Yeah, he likes to read books. Not like no, Bran but... or anybody like useful or anything, but Sam? Sam likes to read books, dude. The That's one... what I like to do. Yeah, he just wants to be a good person, man. He just wants to be a good person. And he wants to get wow. some ass from Gilly. Sam really Sam. Let, let's correct. <laughs> Correction, Stoll. I agree with you. He wants to be a good person while also getting ass from the incest girl okay moving on moving on uh we're gonna talk we're gonna head over uh, we're gonna go across the scene to marine and we're gonna talk about a girl daenerys so another storyline that i don't think we're all all of us are in clueless about is daenerys now last daenerys last scene totally surrounded by a giant freaking army of dothraki you know the dothraki we haven't seen since the end of season one they all abandoned her and the que- the legitimate question i have are these people coming back to worship her, or are they going to hate her? Are they friend or are they foe? Mr. Austin Lucari, I really want your take on this. Spoiler alert. What? I did see I did see an image on Instagram, and it makes me a little sad that I got spoiled a little bit because I've been trying, trying so hard to stay unspoiled. But I saw an image, and it was an image of the Dothraki carry like dragging Daenerys poor poor sweet Daenerys uh around the countryside in chains so I do think that they do not accept her as like um one of their own um and they do ultimately imprison her which is very unfortunate but we do have Drogon repairing himself from his injuries and he's going to come and he's going to save Daenerys, and he's going to eat all the poor, pathetic people that tried to capture her. And uh, it's going to be great. Everybody's going to be happy, and uh, we can just uh, live happily ever after with Daenerys as the queen of Westeros. Um, first off, you're, here's your first problem, Austin. You said happily ever after and West, uh, Daenerys, queen of Westeros, in the same breath. Mm-hmm. Those, yeah. two things do not co- those two things do not coincide. No, uh, it's going to be awesome. Don't I mean, worry about it. I mean... I'm not gonna lie. I I kind of have a thing for Daenerys. Uh, I I mean she's very. I mean uh, I I mean <laughs> as a guy who is is quite frankly very single, and you know if I'm gonna have a, <laughs> if I'm gonna have a crush on a fictional very powerful woman, uh, you know I, I mean I just wish you know so and she's beautiful and there's all that. Okay, sure I fall for the trick. I mean but her let's be honest. Is not- <laughs> Her character. That's annoying. She has a history of being a <laughs> terrible leader. Let's not forget, guys. Last season, she just was like, I want to show the masters that I'm in business. So I'm going to go have my dragons roast the masters, and that's going to stop the problem. Oh, wait. The Sons of the Harpy didn't go away. In fact, they committed more murders and then eventually turned on me in the fighting pits. I'm not seeing the problem yeah. here. I don't know what you're getting I, at. I'm with Caleb on this one. I, I, Danny's always been one that has annoyed me. Um, I really liked her in season one. Uh, she had a great story arc in season one, but ever since then, it's just been a slow decline, and now she's just an annoy, annoying person to me. I really hope that uh, they can, they could be friends. I think logic to me says that they could be friend to her. I mean, if you think about it, they worship a uh, horse. The horse is like their god. The idea, that, um, and then they see her riding on a dragon. So to me, logic would have said uh, even greater than a horse, like someone riding, being able to master uh, like a, something. That would have been 
uh, hey, this is a, could be a great friend of ours. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think it's actually going to go that way. But I really, really hope that I'm wrong about that and that, it, that they do become – they are friend to her. But we'll see what happens. Spoilers for Daenerys' storyline right now. Are you there? Are you there? And I'm only talking about if you absolutely know nothing about what's going on. Okay. So just today, <laughs> the day of recording, there was a trailer that dropped – and it definitely shows Daenerys not being treated remotely well at all. Like, she's in chains, being beaten and stuff. So, something tells me she's not going to be so well off. It's a sad at least at, at least at first. At first. I, I still have hope. I still have hope, man. They could be friends. Why can't we be <laughs> friends? Why can't we be friends? Austin, Austin's very singing this year, guys. I like the new Austin. He's like a That's downer. Right. He's a downer, but he likes to sing. I, this is a new Austin Lucari we've never seen guys, before. Guys, I'm trying out for American Idol. It's going to be great. Vote for me. I'll vote for you. <laughs> Lucari Masters 2016 presidential elections. Please pick me. So... Uh, what I want to, I, I guess, something I, I want to talk about with, with Daenerys though is, guys, I'm really tired of her not making it to freaking Westeros. Like, I don't want another of her, her a season of her ruling a kingdom or trying to get that big freaking army. Like, I'm just tired of it. If if she's gonna do something in in uh, Essos, it needs to be something different than what we've seen before. So I really hope this Dothraki storyline at least concludes with her on a boat. Heading to Westeros, like I just I need that I need that so badly in my life. Yeah. I'm just at this point we have seen her it so meandered around Essos, not really making any progress. Yeah, she's learned some lessons, but has she? I you know so it's just one of those things. I I am really just ready for her to like for that to, that plot thread to move forward. Um, although I will say, you know what the bonus is? We get to see Varys and Tyrion rule over Marine together. So we do get to see Varys. Tyrion 2016. This is the thing we get to see in this show. Isn't that exciting? Yes. So so removed from the show for a year, I'm sitting back and thinking, is it, it maybe this is wrong of me. Maybe this is sacrilege. But I'd like to see less Tyrion. Shame. Shame. Austin, you just said by saying I need a break from this character that I don't like them. They're a bad character. I never want to see them again. That's what I just heard. Now, now he's a he's a great character. He is. We've had so much time with Tyrion, and we've neglected a lot of characters. The characters that are floating out in the sea, rowing endlessly forever. Characters that are here again, waving around their flaming blades and resurrecting from death that we've never even talked about. I don't I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it because I do think Tyrion's obviously going to be a staple of the show because he's a fan favorite. He's always going to be there. But ultimately, I kind of would like to see a little less of him. And especially with the way the storyline is going, I don't want to see Tyrion ruling over a crappy city with a bunch of crappy people that I don't want to hear about. I don't think it's going to end up being that interesting. Yeah, that's the I, qu- I think that's the question you have to ask yourself, uh, Austin, or all of us really. Do we really care that Tyrion and Varys are ruling Marine together? I know. I'll be honest. I sure as heck don't. I want them to get out of Marine so fast. I'm so over that storyline. I, I think. I think that one thing that we could g- get from it um, is we'll get to see the difference between how Danny ran Marine and how Tyrion will run Marine or T- Tyrion and Varys, t- Varys together. Um, so I think that's one thing that would be a positive side of it is we'll get to see the the difference in that. But I do agree that like. With Caleb there, I don't think they should be Marine. I want them to go. Want them to get out. I mean, Tyrion can't really go back, so what's he going to do anyway? But I can see where you guys are coming from. That this could be a storyline that could be fun and exciting to see their interactions together, but might not be overall important to the story. Yeah, I I, I, I don't know. I will say this, Austin. I, as I was making this outline for the show and thinking about where that character's at, I'm I'm with you. I think again, I love seeing Tyrion. We all love seeing Tyrion. But there were definitely episodes last season where he literally just. Sh- there, we, it's like we have to. We it's like a. It's it's like a, you have to check that box every episode. All right, we checked in with Tyrion. What's he doing this week? Nothing. I mean, he's got some exactly. cool. He's got some cool, really fun Woody dialogue. But what did he do? He sat exactly. in a box. He sat in a box. A, a box being hauled across Essos with Varys, and they talked about how they wanted to get out. 
Now, yes, there was a very cool exchange in which they talked about the idea of we're really the ones who are ruling the kingdom, but no one's ever going to give us credit for it. That was great. Was it necessary? Not really. And, mm-hmm. and, and I just think sometimes you need your best friend to go away just for a little bit, even for an episode or two, so that you can remember that you miss them. Exactly. How many episodes last season did we not see Tyrion? It was very, very few. Maybe one at the Maybe most. Maybe one. I, he he is almost in every episode of Game of Thrones. He's in the I, game. I love him. I really do. He's a yeah. favorite character of mine, as he is with everybody. But we are sacrificing the storylines of so many other great, amazing characters that have been put together by these directors and and George R. R. Martin. And we're not seeing them. We're not. And it's mostly because we have to see so much Tyrion all the time. Well, and here's the question you have to ask yourself, too. We already watched Tyrion rule over a kingdom that was way more interesting than Marine. It was called King's Landing in Season 2. And while I not, agree. And, and while not the strongest season, t- that story arc was phenomenal. Like, that was some of the most fun we've ever had in the entire show. Tyrion, like, having unlimited power. Like, being able to do whatever he wanted in King's Landing. And ultimately, he chose to be... You know, while being t- very teary and, and kind of a, and making a little bit of mischief and, and having fun. And that was a great story arc and it was a great season, but we've already seen that done. Do we really want to see it again? I, again, I'd rather spend us uh, seeing other characters or seeing Tyrion do, at the very least, doing something different. That's just me. I think that's a great point, Austin. Now, I, I think we, we there was one other storyline I think we mu- absolutely must hit on. Oh, um, in passing, I don't really have much to say about it. I don't think any of us really do. But uh, Jorah, just for, for reference, listeners, Jorah and Dario are going to go on a uh, buddy road trip to go and find uh, Daenerys. And if Jorah doesn't come back with Dario's head on a spike, I don't watch this show anymore. So <laughs> No, it's that, it's Jorah infects Dario, and then Dario dies. And then oh, that's, that's right, because he's got – because that's right. That's because uh, that's because Jorah's got AIDS. I mean, he's got yeah. grayscale. Grayscale. Right. Yeah. So Jorah's <laughs> going to uh, intentionally infect Dario – and uh, that's that's all that that's going to be worth. Are you for that saying? Sort of are you saying we're going to get? Are you saying we're going to get like some uh, a, a bromance going on there that's eventually going to evolve into a a broke back mi- mountain style Game of Thrones episode? Okay, we got to get moving on, guys. Um, <laughs> so there's one other storyline I want to hit on a- a- across the scene, and that's actually taking us back to Bravos, uh, where we're going to reunite with Arya Stark. Now, if you go back and listen to our, some of our conversations <laughs> in our season four. Uh, in our season five Game of Thrones discussions, uh, we, at the end of the day, we were all very curious about Arya's storyline, but at the end of the day, we were not so hot on her storyline. And having just rewatched uh, hand picked episodes from season five, I'm really not a fan of her storyline. Like, I, I'm like upset about it. Like, her, the way she executes what's his name, uh, whatever his name was, she executes that guy, it made me kind of upset. And I, I think that's what the show is going for. At least I like to hope to uh, hope so. Because she brutally murders that guy in really brutal, sadistic, like, like psychopath-like fashion. And it was really mm-hmm. disturbing. I mean, it was disturbing to me last year, but man, it is just not setting well with me. So the fact that Arya is blind, I'm like, good riddance, Arya. You deserved it. Marin Trout was a bad person who deserved bad things, and he was a I, pedophile. You know, you know what? There's a few questions there. One, is anyone going to question where Marin Trant went? Like back in uh, in Westeros, uh, he's uh, he's dead. She killed him. Brutally. Well, yeah, but is anyone going to say, "Hey, where the heck did Mirren Trant go?" Well, yeah, I mean, what's going on? Did I, somebody kill him? I, I mean, she s- might end up having to pay for that eventually. Two, I agree with you. Um, her storyline last year was terrible. Um, I don't know. I I think she might end up meeting a quick demise. I really do. Um, I think that she is not going to make it very far in uh, in this world without the the gift of sight. I don't think she can adapt quickly enough. So I think we're going to have one less Stark in the world. Calling it no, out. don't do this to me. Yep. Uh, don't do this to uh, me. Uh, uh, Sorry. Uh, Arya so, is my favorite character. Yeah, she's season, terrible. Season listeners terrible will remember that, that Stoll has regularly named Arya his favorite character. So Daniel Stoll. I am loyal to the end. Loyal to the end, you fool, you fool. Uh, that's why I'm a Stark, man. That's yeah, why I'm a Stark. You are a Stark. <laughs> I am loyal beyond all reason. <laughs> uh, all right, so Stoll, where are we? Where do we? I mean, she's your favorite character. Where do we see Arya going this season with you? I mean, you guys are. You know, your point is valid. Her storyline was weak. Uh, I still really want her. Like, she is my favorite character. 
the show was making it harder for her to be my favorite character. Uh, the storyline for her was not very good. Uh, hopefully they can turn that around this season. I think that uh, the blindness is an interesting aspect. I think that maybe they can do a lot of maybe do a lot of cool things with that. Um, maybe she will um, actually think about why they are making her blind and that she didn't uh, break these r- rules that the faceless men have. Um, so I don't know. I'm I'm ex- I'm cautiously excited. Uh, I hope that her storyline can be a, a really awesome one, and I hope they can turn it around from uh, what happened last season. Um, so I think that maybe she – I think I do think that she can't have the revenge aspect that we want for, from her and be a faceless man. I don't think that she can have both of those things at the same, times, at the same time. So she is – like the faceless men are trying to make her to do. She's going to have to choose those things. So, And as an audience member, we're going to have to choose as well. Do we want her to have – to, to drop the faceless men and be a revenge character or do you want her to drop the revenge and then enter this new um, part of her life? Okay, yeah. No, I, I totally think that's a fair point. And then I think last season made that very clear. You cannot have vengeance and be part of this order. I mean, they made it very clear when Dario Naharis, a.k.a. not Dario Naharis, a.k.a. Chris Angel's mind freak, he killed himself. So... She has to make a decision, and maybe being blind will help out with that. I don't know. I will say, kind of like with Tyrion and, and Westeros, and kind of like Daenerys wandering around uh, Essos, I really don't want a whole other season of, of Arya wandering around Bravos training Batman Begins style because I don't. I don't know. It's just. It's just not. It, I just. I had. I feel like I got my fill last season, and it wasn't great. But I'm like, you know what? I can eat my broccoli sometimes because I understand they're laying groundwork for big, important storylines, even if I don't particularly enjoy this storyline. But man, a two seasons of it, I, I need to see progress. I need to see progress before I get upset uh, about her storyline. So she is a fan favorite, and I quite like Arya a lot. But now, man, last season, uh, take me back to the the days when it was her and the Hound killing uh, eating every fucking chicken in this room that's what i want back that's what i miss about Arya. i completely agree with you and i think the fact that she's blind now is not going to help that situation on the subject of eating every fucking chicken in this room i do have a question it's a little i'm keeping on you guys on your toes i didn't let you know about this one ahead of time do we see the hound make a resurgence this year is he are we are we are we, or do we think him he's definitely dead I, i'm curious because i really want to believe the hound's gonna come back somehow you know, I was thinking about this just today, just this morning, when I was thinking about characters who died off screen that we never really got to see much of. I think he comes back. I think he does. I think he makes it through it. The Hound is a tough, a tough cookie. He's a Clegane. We have seen, we have seen Cleganes come back from worse, as uh, we might talk about a little bit later. And um, I, I, I do. I think he comes back. I, I agree with Austin here. Uh, I think that we didn't see the Hound die. He's he's one of those like miserable characters that he wanted to die, so of course he lived. And I don't think he's just coming back. I think we're gonna have a Clegane Bowl. You can buy your tickets now because it's gonna be a good show. Oh my God! Are you saying we're gonna have Franklin Clegane versus X Men Clegane? He's gonna be like a mutant exactly. Clegane. Mutant Clegane Tag team match. Both Clegane brothers versus zombie John Stark. And blind Arya Stark. It's going to be a good time. It's like a cripple fight, Austin. How do you do that? (laughs) I mean, I'm pretty sure the the Franklin Clegane and X-Men Clegane could take on the White Walker army themselves. But, you know, (laughs) that's just me. (laughs) No, but they are going to fight. I think that's going to happen this season. And it's going to be a great, great thing to watch happen. This season, you think? Yes. I'm going to call it now. This season, it's happening. Well, I'm not going to. Bet a pop figure on that stall because I'm pretty sure we both know who would win that one. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about get back to King, the heart of the business, King's Landing, which generally speaking was kind of like where the quote unquote main plot was happening, but it's season five was less so. Now there was important. There's still a very important storyline going on there with Cersei's storyline, her fall from grace, um, her struggle against Margie, Tar- Marjorie Tyrell, a lot of different stuff going on there, but ultimately. It's not like season one where it was all centered in King's Land or even season two where you had uh, Tyrion and Cersei there or season three where you had Tywin and Tyrion and Cersei there or in season four you had the court scene. So not as big a deal as it used to be, but still very crucial plot points. So we're going to be looking at Cersei post Walk of Shame because as you remember, last season we all felt kind of bad for Cersei a little bit. 
Now, yep. we don't really like her as a person, but man, Game of Thrones is masterful at like really wanting you to making you really want to see horrible things happen to somebody, only for you to watch that thing happen to that person and you realize, oh my god, they don't deserve this. It's pretty brilliant, actually. Amazing writing, and also really, really begs the question of if revenge is worth it or not. And guess what, guys? I don't think it is because I felt really bad for Cersei. She got like shit thrown in her face. I mean, that was just not that was just uncalled for. Um, but so this is Cersei though. She's not going to take this laying down. Let's let's face it. She is not taking this laying down. So where do we see her going? Is she going to kill the sparrows? Is she going to try and get in league with the sparrows so she can backstab them later? Is she going to summon Franklin Clegane to behead Mister the, the head of the, the high sparrow? I, I mean, where where do we see her going again? This is uncharted terror for all of us, and I really don't know. Uh, her storyline is all new this season. I think that uh, she's definitely going to go for revenge, the return of Jamie, and uh, Mountain uh, the zombie. Frankenstein Clegane uh, <laughs> she's going out for revenge this time and uh, we're going to see what happens to the sparrows uh, for for deciding to go after Cersei and there's going to be a lot of consequences for them I think and uh, I think I'm pulling for Cersei here I, I don't like her as a character and as much as I do hate her I want her to win this battle now I don't want her to win the war but I want her to win this battle I want her to destroy the sparrows so you want to see embittered Cersei versus religious zealots you want to see te- team Cersei beat team religious zealots I can, I can get behind that yes I 100% agree I think Cersei is going to come out um, swinging out of this I think she's going to create a very, very, very bloody King's Landing. And I think everyone is going to regret crossing her eventually. Um, Ultimately, I think it will do her in, maybe at the end of the season. But I think she's going to take down a lot of the city with her before she goes down. Well, so you think... That kind of leads me to my next question, which is: You think that she's so she don't think she's actually going to regain power. You think she's just going to she's just a sinking ship, and she's trying to take everyone she can down with her. I think she doesn't ultimately regain power. I think Toman rises above all of it, um, and I think he maintains power. I heavily disagree with that. Actually, I don't think uh, Toman ha- is has the ability to stand up to his mom. So I think if she doesn't regain power, that it won't be in Toman's hands at all. Um, so I think it's up to Cersei to get, to get to take this back, all the mistakes that she's made, um, and with the family's power, I, it's up to her to bring it back, or I think it's over for the Lannisters. Yeah, I I think that she does get power back somehow. I just can't imagine it. Game of Thrones, because she is a character I think is going to make it all the way. Now, I think she's ultimately not going to end up happy with what she wants, but I do think she's going to make it all the way. Maybe she dies at the end, maybe not. Either way, I feel like she's going to feel very, I think she's going to make it, but she's going to feel very unfulfilled. That's just kind of how I've always envisioned that character, because she's really good at what she does. She's very smart. She knows how to play the game well enough. Obviously, she's not in the same league as, say, Littlefinger or Varys, but she does know how to play the game enough to survive so i think she's she's i think she's gonna be around she's like a cockroach you can't quite smash her i don't know if she really regains full power what i do expect to see though her i i expect to see her go on take down the religion take on the religious zealots as a political entity i think she tries again this is game of thrones it's a very politically driven show especially in king's landing and i think she goes after the faith militant she goes and tries to take their power away not through actual violence but through some sort of political political you know scheming of some sort she's gonna try to undermine them somehow and that's kind of where i see her going ultimately i don't know if she rises back to the same rank as she was she was at before because let's not forget she also has marjorie to contend with marjorie a character we haven't seen in a couple episodes even at the end of last season i think last time we saw her she was also locked in a prison cell um although i believe she confessed her sins which Cersei did not. So, you know, there's some stuff going on there. Uh, some really interesting stuff going on there. And I will say, another wrench in the scheme, in the plan or the, of the book readers is, Jamie Lannister, definitely not anywhere near King's Landing when this is all going on. So he's coming back to King's Landing with a dead uh, Lannister on his hands. So let's not forget that his daughter, Marcella got poisoned by the scorned lover of Obra Martell, uh, Poison Marcella. And we're pretty sure, so she's dead. So Jamie's going to come back to Cersei with a dead child. Now, if there's one thing we know about Cersei, it's that she loves her children dearly. Very, very dearly. 
and I'm really not sure she's going to be in the mood to accept Jamie's help because even last season, we already got very mixed reactions from her. She didn't really seem like she was into Jamie. She was pushing him further away, sent him on a suicide mission, and he's going to return with blood on his hands, the blood that she cares about. So I don't feel like I, – I feel like she's going to – I think we're going to see continue to see her push him away this season. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I think ultimately um, she will be pretty upset when she brings home her dead daughter. Um there are some questions apparently amongst people that whether or not Marcella is actually dead, but I think she is most assuredly dead. Um, and I think when uh, Jamie brings her home, uh, he will be shunned for it. I think Jamie ultimately will have to leave King's Landing and pursue his own path because I think Cersei will not really have him there anymore. So Cersei is going to banish him. Yeah, I believe so. Um, I don't know if I 100% agree. I think that after everything that she's gone through, I think she'll be, at least at first, happy to see Jamie. Uh, when she realizes that Marcella's dead, I think it'll depend on how good of a job Jamie does convincing her that it was all Dorn, and uh, maybe she turns her vengeance towards them after the, she takes care of the sparrows. Um, we'll see. I don't know. But I definitely think she'll be upset with Jamie be, uh, at, after the initial joy of having him back. Uh, because I think he prom- I'm pretty sure he promised her that he would bring their daughter back, and he has failed on that promise. Um, so I think she's going to be upset with him. Uh, I don't know if I'd go far as, as to say that she's going to banish him, but it's going to uh, cause them to, to grow farther apart, and their relationship's going to be pretty much uh, over in the sense of ro- the romantic, weird romantic relationship that they have. Uh, I think it's pretty much gone. Interesting, interesting. Um, I do, because I read the interwebs, I do have some inside baseball that I'm not going to reveal here, but I will say people who really like Jamie's arc in book four, the one that we thought wasn't going to happen, and I was, if you remember, recall go- listening to me rant about this in our season five Game of Thrones podcast, I was very not happy that this was not ha- it was not happening at the time. Well, it looks like they didn't cut it, they just kind of pushed it up, they, they pushed it back a little bit. So, fans of that storyline, I won't reveal what it is or what the context is, but I, I will say I am a huge fan of his uh, Book 4 storyline. Like, like it's one of my favorite plots of the entire series. Guys, I have a voice we have not talked about. I haven't mentioned the name all podcast long. You should be proud of me. Oh, boy. Here it goes. Right, here it is. My man, the man who is going to win Game Evil. of Thrones, <laughs> he's going to win the Iron Throne. He's going to sit upon a th- uh, on a kingdom of ashes. Nope. Peter Baelish nope. is a huge wild card this season. Peter Littlefinger Baelish, my favorite character on this show by a lot. Last we heard was that he, right before Cersei got taken down by the Sparrows and the Faith Militant, Littlefinger was able to secure himself an army so that he could go down or go north to Winterfell to get Sansa back from the clutches of the Boltons. Even though he declined to give her that information significantly earlier because, you know, he knew what that would mean. So, Littlefinger heading north with an army. He's also Lord of the Eyrie currently. Going up to Winterfell. Now, we're not sure. We, at the time, we were certainly were not sure what he was planning on doing exactly. Was he actually going to get Sansa back? Was he going to fight with the Boltons to take down Stannis? Or was he going to hope that Stannis overtook the Boltons so that he could get Sansa back, like, there's there's a lot of different wild cards here, and I'm really not sure what to make of it. And this is why I love Littlefinger. He always has you guessing, and I am so curious to see what brilliant mastermind move he's going to make this year. Because he always pl- he look, always look, makes look. those moves where you're like, holy shit, Baelish. Like, no, I mean, you were, like, taking ten steps ahead of everyone. Now, no one even saw that coming. So <laughs> you're you're right that he's gonna have a you're right that he's gonna have a plan and it's gonna be a good one. But he has made the such a big and you're wrong that he's gonna win it all because Sansa is gonna kill him 100 percent, no questions. Because as much as you guys have been confused about what this show is about, the Starks are gonna win in the end. So Sansa's gonna <laughs> kill Littlefinger and she's gonna be the one sitting there at the end, and that's what's gonna happen. Daniel, if you think this story has a happy yes. ending, you have not been paying attention. Okay, Stoll, we can respectfully disagree because Littlefinger is thinking 20 steps ahead. Although, 
that was a pretty you're massive, right about that, that you're right a, he's gonna have a good plan and there was a, he was definitely a, a massive misfire pairing sansa with ramsey i think that was a very huge miscalculation on his part and yeah probably gonna come back to bite him in the butt one day but not this day it will not be this day because he is little finger yeah, peter it, baelish I, I, it and won't happen this season but it's gonna happen all right whatever you say stall Little finger, he's gonna win, ruling on the kingdom of ashes. There's not gonna be anyone who's who's following him, but he'll be the rule. He'll rule it. Honestly, I had almost forgotten about where Peter Baelish was at until we talked about it a little bit earlier. Honestly, I had written him off as kind of like a fool at this point. He he had kind of used Sansa as um as a bargaining chip, but I thought it was very short sighted in the way that he had used her. Um, that he had not really thought through that her full value. Um, but he has um, been able to raise an army as a result of her um, kind of pawning her off on the Ramses. Um, and ultimately, I think it's going to, to play in his favor. I don't think the Boltons um, really have that much of an army, ultimately. And I think it's going to end up playing in his favor He's going to be able to rule the North entirely on his own. And um, I think that's going to give him a strong foothold in order to be able to move into King's Landing, which obviously is his ultimate goal. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a good point. I think he he is taking the North because I do think the I think the season we're gonna I think we're finally gonna see the fall of the Boltons this season. So I think Littlefinger has a pretty substantial chance at taking that. Uh, now let's not he doesn't have just one army. He's got an army from King's Landing, and he's also at the, at his will he can get the Eerie behind him too. So I that's don't... that's another army that he could have just just right there. So it's just it's just something to consider. I I I think he makes some big power plays this season, but again in the most little finger way possible, no one is going to really take him that seriously. They're going to be like, "Oh, well Peter Baelish just took the north. Ah, he's our buddy though. He's on our side, so we're all good. We're all good now." Cuz he's on our I, side. I don't know if I I don't know if I agree that this is the fall of the Bolton. I think the Boltons are in the best positions they've been in uh since we've been introduced to them. So I don't know if this is the fall of them. I and mean, they just took out Stannis, so they're in a pretty good spot. Uh, well, their army is a little weak. I think politically power. They're, they're the North is not going to the North. The only reinforcements the North is sending them is Peter Baelish's army that he's probably going to use to fight them with. Okay, um, and I I just don't. I, first off, from just kind of a narrative perspective, I just don't really. I feel like we've kind of played out the Bolton stuff like there's not really much more to them right they're just really the, the really Boltons fun. were never were never that intelligent to begin with exactly. and honestly they've outlived no, right. their usefulness at this point yeah, they were a uh, tool that used by Tywin Lannister Tywin Lannister's gone no one else cares about them everyone else knows they're kind of crazy and for one in the context of the story I still feel like we're going to get a northern uprising against them because they've hinted at that for the last two seasons and then secondly I just from a narrative perspective, I just feel like they've played out. Like, what else can we? Ex- we spent last season in particular exploring what the family dynamics and the dynamics in the castle were. Like, I and it, you know it was okay. Like, it wasn't the, my favorite thing about season five, but it wasn't bad. But I don't really feel like I want to spend. And it, one of those things, I don't really want to spend more time doing that. I don't care no, about. They're just social. They're setting enough. up. They're setting up a reason for you to hate the Boltons as if you need it anymore, so that you can enjoy their downfall. Um, they're th- they're throwing you a bone here, I guess, and uh, I kind of appreciate it. And I think we're going to uh, see the end of the Boltons this season very early on. Ooh. I don't think it's going to take very long. Ooh, I like the sound of that, Austin. I like the sound of that a lot. I, I like the sound of it. I just don't know if I'm convinced that's what's going to happen. I am. I mean, do you really? Can you really see a whole another season of the Boltons sitting on Winterfell? No, I don't think it'll be them sitting on Winterfell. I think it'll be them trying to to make a move. I don't know exactly what, but I don't think that. Well, that's the thing. They don't um, have their ambition. Downfall of them. Yeah. No, no, that's the thing. Still, I'm totally going to disagree with you because that's the thing about them is they don't have any ambitions other than to rule the North. That is the end game for them. Is they want to own the North. They don't really want to. They're not like Littlefinger. They're not trying to conquer Westeros. They're not trying to move into other kingdoms. They're just trying to sustain what they have. And not and outside of the fact that Baelish has got an army heading up there, uh, let's not forget there's a freaking White Walker army that totally trounced Hardhome that's heading towards the wall. That's something else to consider. That's something else that if the Boltons are going to stay in power, are going to have to fight, and it's going to have to happen sooner rather than later. So 
It's okay. We can all disagree still. It's okay. But I, I just, this is the end of them. I think I, from, just, it's just not interesting to watch anymore. So therefore they have to go. And I, yeah, I mean, I'm you sure. You guys have valid points. So, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong. I'll, I'll buy you a beer one day if I'm wrong. Uh, but until that day. Do, do we want to make the second bet? Uh, until that day, still, I'll continue the to be pop right. pop figure bet. <laughs> until. The second bet of the season. <laughs> Until that day, Stoll, I'll continue to be right. Because the world knows two <laughs> things that I like. I like to drink and know things. <laughs> so, guys, let's go ahead and wrap the conversation. We need to, wrap, we need to start heading up wrapping up. We're way over time. But you know what? It's fine. We're enjoying some Game of Thrones chatter. Um, so I want to hit on what are the bit, what I consider the big series-long questions here. One of which, how do we feel now that we're mostly in uh, uncharted waters? We're all in this together, and uh, quite frankly, I, it's in some ways more. Cha- it's a new challenge for me doing this podcast because I don't have information that I know is coming that I can tease on or I can feed off of or, or know how to lead the show. So for me, it's definitely uh, kind of an interesting challenge, and I'm excited about it. But this is the first time I have been this way since season two, and it was there was a little bit of this last season for sure. There was definitely some of this last season where I was like, I don't know where this is going, man. But this season, I mean, we're talking big series, long arcs. Daenerys, Jon Snow, Bran, like some of the biggest arcs in the story. They're going on without the books. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know. I really don't. It's exciting. But I'm also like, oh, man, whew, this podcast is going to be a lot more work. And it's going to be a lot more fun just kind of playing the guessing game with you guys. I, I, how, how do you feel about that, Austin? I'm definitely – oh, sorry. You know what? I am ecstatic that you are now all in my boat where you don't know what's happening. You get to play the guessing game because it's a fantastic place. This like whole conspiracy corner that I'm in right now. It's amazing. You oh, guys this whole, will this whole episode's it. been conspiracy corner, Austin. We're all living there together. Now there's no longer, uh, there's no mm-hmm. longer Austin, the mm-hmm. saying Cersei killed Joffrey. <laughs> We're all trying to predict who's who killed Joffrey together. And isn't it fantastic? Have you been enjoying enjoying every second of it? It's eh, great. Give me give me a couple episodes to just make that decision. <laughs> I I'm definitely excited uh, to see where things go without knowing what's going to happen. Uh, I think that the show has, in theory, has the most freedom they've had since they've even started the show. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Now I don't re- exactly know the details of all that, but in theory, the, the books aren't out, so they should have the the most freedom that they've ever had. So it'll be interesting to see how they decide to develop the show, develop the characters, and, and where they take them. So I'm excited. Okay, very, very cool. Um, you know, that's I'm, I'm, we're all excited to see how this turns out. Now, uh, so something else I, I want to ask about. We've avoided – I dodged the bullet earlier, but we've got to talk about it. Jon Snow, he's not dead. What do you, what do you mean, Caleb? <laughs> I don't understand. I, I mean, they've only told us a, like a thousand times he's dead. So surely that's I what's mean, happening. John's Kit Harrington not showing at Comic Con along with creators DB Wise, David Benioff, and George R. R. Martin. You know, the only people who would quote unquote know that he's not dead, not being there. There's that. There's the fact that he didn't show up at the premiere, even though he's a body in the premiere episode. And even though other actors who have been long dead on the show have showed up at the new season premieres of Game of Thrones, not conspicuous at all. There's also the fact that the trailers, the marketing, has been all about going out of their way to tell us that he is dead. All the emphasis on the, f- uh, in fact, the uh, the the first the the, the first uh, lead in, the first synopsis of the first episode, first sentence: Jon Snow is dead. Jon's- I mean, guys, going out of your way to point out that Jon Snow is dead is just pure evidence that he's definitely not dead. Now, you can go back and listen to us talk about this a lot last season at the end in our tail end of the uh, season discussion where we talk, we, there's a little theory called R plus L equals J that I'm sure we'll get back into. I'm positive we're going to get back into more later this season. But go check that theory out if you haven't looked into it. Again, R plus L equals J. But uh, we all think he might be a Targaryen. And I think there's some real reasoning behind that. And I think that's also going to lead to the fact that he's not dead. I feel like that character, I know that Game of Thrones is constantly about subverting your expectations. They kill Ned Stark. They kill Rob Stark, who we're expecting to get vengeance for Ned Stark in the North. But Jon Snow has so much mythology and buildup wrapped up into that character. It would feel like a cheat and an injustice to both the character and the storyline at large if he was actually out of the game fully. 
And I just can't buy the fact that he's dead. He's got too much left to do. And I know we all rooted for Rob Stark and he died. You're like, oh, I can't believe he's dead. But D- Jon Snow feels there's something different there. There's too much foreshadowing with that character to do more that, that Rob Stark and Ned Stark never, ever had. So he's got to be back. I'm not the, the big question in my mind is not will he back, be back. It's how will he be back. Is, is Melisandre going to resurrect him? Uh, is are they going to try and burn him and then realize he's a Targaryen and he's going to walk away from the flames? Like, how is this going to play out? That's really my bigger question. I th- yeah, I was going to say, I think we're going to find out really soon uh, if the Targaryen theory is wrong or right, uh, which I'm 99% sure that it's correct that he is a Targaryen. And the reason we're going to find that out is they burn bodies in the North as soon as they die because they all re- uh, they reanimate and come back to life so we know from Daenerys' side that you cannot be burned as a targaryen so when they try to burn him he won't be burned uh, and that will confirm his r plus l equals j i think uh, and and to talk of how he actually comes back to life i'm i guess the, the easiest one to say is just that melisandre is going to resurrect him because we've seen that happen before um, so i think that's the easy answer but i don't really know i'm not 100% sure on that one I, I do think Melisandre is the key to all this. Um, I think the fact that she stayed in the North, she did not go with Stannis, is all very, very important to this story. Um, he is alive. I don't think any of us think otherwise. Um, and I think um, we're going to see a lot of Jon Snow going forward. But I think it's going to be a fundamentally changed Jon Snow I don't think it's going to be the same one that we've seen in the past. Um, it's going to be very, very different. Well, you talk about when we look at uh, Beric Dondarrion, and you know the 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 warrior that what was his name prayed. They got resurrected like six times. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What, right. who, what was the uh, Thoros of Mir? Yeah, Thoros of Mir resurrected him by praying that he would come alive. And he said every time he came back, he was a little bit different. So what if Jon Snow mm-hmm. comes back and he's just a little bit different? You know, I think so. I think this, and I think again, that's another one of those things. I feel like the show has laid the groundwork to prove this theory correct. I really, really do, and I'm very, very excited to see how they're going to bring him back. I, I, I am. Uh, there's some a lot of clips and trailers floating around out there, none of the, which allude to the fact that Johnson is alive by any means. But I do think that we are going to find out probably in the first three episodes, if it even takes that long. I, I want to say knee jerk reactions we find it in episode one, but maybe they drag it out a little bit, and I'd probably be okay with it as long as they made it you know interesting. Um, but I think it's something we find out very very quickly. But that is the, I agree. that is the ten pound gorilla in the room, and we have to talk about it with talking about Game of Thrones season six. And this is probably going to be the biggest reveal uh, in the entire show uh, series of the show. This has been the, the the one of the questions: Who is Jon Snow's mother? And, well, if he comes back to life, I just feel like it's going to be inherently related to his heritage because his heritage is very key to who he is. And, again, if, if he is confirmed a Targaryen, very key to the series, a la la, the title, A Song of Ice and Fire. Just think about that. Well, I think that we have talked a lot about Game of Thrones. The only question I have left at all, are the White Walkers going to be a big player this season? Now, we have seen them usually once a season do something. Now, we saw them show up in a big way at Hard Home. Big way. For them to let us know that these guys mean freaking business. They're not just total shadow players. They are going to come and they are going to wipe out civilization. We saw them coming back in a big way. Do we expect to see them in a bigger capacity this year? In a larger, more... Are they going to be more present than one episode a season? Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Austin? I think the White Walkers... Um, hmm... I think they're ultimately going to take a little bit of a backseat um, to some of the other storylines coming on. I think they pushed them a lot last season. Um, we're going to see hints of a growing army, of a growing threat, as we had in previous seasons. But last season, it was kind of very in-your-face. Here's what's happening. It's a huge threat. Um, we're going to see a little bit of hints of, a, of, of growing strength um, with Bran's storyline as well as Jon Snow's. Uh, but I think we're going to see a little less of them than we did last season. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Less White Walker. Okay. Okay. All right. Someone has been watching the trailers. Okay. All right. All right. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that's a, I think it's an interesting point, Austin. Those of you who have watched the trailers, uh, go tune in. You might find out. might get a little hints about who's right and who's wrong in this conversation. But we don't want to spoil <laughs> anything for Austin, the Unsullied. 
That's we would right. not want to wreck it for him. So we will leave that up to him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's gonna. we're going to go ahead and wrap the show. Uh, now, typically, this is where we pre-hash next week's episode. But, guys, let's just be honest. It's the season six premiere. You know what you need to know. Jon Snow's dead. Everyone's spread about. We just spent the last hour and a half talking about where these people are at. That's all you need to know. We don't need to pre-hash next week's episode because we're going to find out. What I do want to remind you guys, though, where can you find us online here on the cast beyond the wall uh, and talk to us? Because not only do we love talking about Game of Thrones with each other, we love talking with you guys. And there's a few different places you can talk to us. First and foremost, you can absolutely head over to our host, Good Trash Media, where we are going to be posting all of our updates for for the podcast at that's goodtrashmedia.com. If you want to talk to us, um, you can always comment on the website below. What are your theories about Westeros? Where are things going this season? I really want to hear what you have to say. You can also head over to the Facebook.com. Head over to Facebook at facebook.com slash goodtrashmedia. Uh, or follow us on, hit us up on Twitter at good underscore trash. And tweet at us. What do you think about Game of Thrones? We really, really want to talk about it with you guys. We're really excited to hear what you have to think. And, you know, um, the Good Trash Media being our home, they're going to be kind of our new gonna be our, a new way for us to have a conversation with you guys through uh, through the website there. Um, so really excited to hear what you have to say. But con- look us up there, Good Trash Media. Uh, and, of course, you can find, well, you can find some of us on, on the Internet. I don't know what these two fools are doing. But you can definitely find me on Twitter at Big Cal Kenobi 91 if you want to tweet at me directly to talk about some of your Game of Thrones theories and your and who's going to live and who dies and your reactions. I would love to be a part of that conversation. Gentlemen, are you going to be on the interwebs talking Game of Thrones this season? And if so, where can they find you? Mr. Daniel Stoll, we'll start with you. Yeah, I definitely will. Um, Daniel Stoll, at Daniel Stoll 23 is uh, my Twitter. Um, so that's where if you want to talk uh, some Game of Thrones with me, that's where I'll be. Uh, my Twitter account is AC Lucari, L U C A R I is my last name. Um, you can add me there, unless, of course, you're a Sam Tarley fan, in which case I don't want anything to do with you. Well, good God. You see what I have to put up with all season? This, <laughs> this, I'm going to put down with Debbie Downer. I'm going to kill something. You know what, Austin? Get over it. Sam's a good oh, character. It's good to be back, isn't it? It's oh, fantastic. I, I avoided you people for an entire year. Why the hell did I think I should talk to you again? Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to our pre-season six discussion. Join us next week when we have finally made it, ladies and gentlemen. We are back after a year. We are talking about Game of Thrones season six, the first episode of the season titled The Red Woman. Definitely not talking about Melisandre. Not one bit. But go ahead and tune, uh, tune in and join us next week when we continue to go beyond the wall. That's terrible. I don't want to spoil it. It's terrible. Why do you do this to me, Caleb? Why do you ruin everything?